Now I've had my children and um, when I experience moving from one era to another, it then become a problem, whereas my children couldn't have the childhood that I had. They couldn't go from A to B. They couldn't go to the shops to go and buy their trainers. They couldn't then take the younger siblings to the shop or to play football because of the gangs and the territorial mm. issues we're facing. So I've seen that the children are suffering a lot more than what we ever did. Um, I think that back in the days when we were grouped together, we were called friendship circles. It's really distressing and disappointing to know that if a group of kids today are, gang are grouped together, it's called a gang. You've labelled them already. Um, poverty is on the rise. It's ridiculous. The amount of children that are going to bed hungry, that are leaving in the morning to go to school hungry. And the thing is, this is not being picked up by the special needs department in schools. Um, all they have to do is see a child and the child will be acting very lethargic or very rude at school. But you could take it aside and find out. Most of the time it's because they're hungry and they're tired. So a lot of these failings are happening with our children and it's really unnecessary. And, and you've got children, right? So what, you've got three yes. kids? I've got four. Four kids, three boys though? Yes. And, and one girl? Yes. Presumably. And so um, what ages are they? OK, so I've got a 28-year-old, I've got a 25-year-old, and my youngest boy is 14, and my daughter is 21. And do they, do they all live at home? or they, they... they live at home and around the area, yeah. so we're still very, very a close-knit family. Mm. And for them then, because you said when you were growing up, it was quite a free place, and I mean, when I was growing up, because I'm old, <laughs> it, was a, it was a fabulous place, you know, you could just, you'd go out, I mean, I used to go to the fields where, where my parents, as I kind of grew up partly in Essex, and we'd go off to the fields, and there were huge fields, farmers' fields, and we'd be there, and it'd just be us, and it was fine, but you can't do that now. You can't do that now. You can't do that now. Um, isolation is a big word, and it didn't just happen through um, COVID and the pandemic. Isolation is what we're doing to the youth and the children. We're isolating them. You've got estates, and, you know, under the law, Section 106, at one point, every estate needs to have a community hall. But... The community halls are being swept from underneath these residents' faces right before their very eyes, and it's being replaced by flats. I understand that we need to accommodate people, I do understand. But then there's other solutions we can have. We can build more tall rise. We can have more people connoisseur at the buildings to make sure that people are entering correctly and whatnot. Give us back our youth clubs. Give us back a place that the children can go and learn and have productive learning, homework sessions. During the COVID, we've realise that a lot of the children are suffering educational-wise. What's being put in place? What is actually happening?